What up, what up, what up, everybody? Colton Core back in with another video. And this one's gonna be one I've been waiting to do for a while, especially after doing my PS4 update this year. Uh, this one will be a hidden gems and underrated games video. Now, the reason I have separated the two is because I believe there's a difference between a game that has no following and is a very undersold game and would be considered a hidden gem because nobody's really found it and it's just a good quality game that nobody's really shined the light on. Or there are games that already have the hype around them or just from a well-known uh, company or publisher and maybe got the sales that they needed but the reviews uh, did not reflect what the uh, the product I think. Uh, or there's games that sold really well or they're from a well-known publisher and either they were bad at the start and then got a patch to be really good now or I just feel that they're underrated and kind of get hate for either not being good as a previous game or really just because of the hate for the certain company. Uh, so just for a quick example, uh, Anarchy Reigns would be a hidden gem on the PS3. It's a very uh, not really talked about game. It's a beat-em-up. Uh, it's made by Platinum Games. Very fun beat-em-up, very fun story. Uh, nobody really talks about it, so this would be considered a hidden gem. Uh, while a game like Dragon Age 2, while it's very popular and a lot of people bought this game, uh, the hype around Dragon Age Origins uh, made this game seem really not as good as it is to people because Origins was kind of a masterpiece and then Dragon Age 2 while being a step down is still a solid game uh, so I would give it the underrated status. Alright so we're going to start off with the hidden gems, I got five in total. Uh, my first one is Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishment. Uh, this is really a dying or not as appreciated genre uh, nowadays I find which is the kind of adventure, almost point and click style of um, mystery solving game. Uh, this is when you play as Sherlock Holmes and you go around solving a variety of different murders. I think there's seven or eight. And the reason why this game's so good is because of how interesting and unique each case is. Uh, each one has multiple different branches where you can technically finish off the case, but there's only one true uh, correct case and you have to find all the evidence and use your own uh, reasoning and wits to come up with who did what. Uh, the reason why I think this game is probably considered a hidden gem in my eyes is that I think this is a really overlooked genre. I think now uh, with shooters, RPGs, and fighting games really being the main focus currently, uh, a lot of these um, older style games that more focus on storytelling and uh, puzzle solving are really getting shoved to the side besides a game like Catherine. Uh, so this is one I would definitely recommend if you're into those style of games, and I would definitely consider it a hidden gem. Alright, next up is a game that anybody who follows the channel know I would talk about in this video, which is Everybody's Golf, which is the Japanese name for Hot Shots. Like, that's just what they went with over there, but now they've kind of just merged it and said, alright, they're all going to be Everybody's Golf from now on, uh, which I'm fine with. Uh, either way, the series I find is very overlooked. Uh, when I talk about games with people, this is one game that I find most people have maybe heard of or heard something about a golf game on one of the older systems, uh, but don't know that they carry over onto the newer consoles and that they're actually still really well made. The golfing's still smooth, the courses are great, and it's just a really fun sit down and play style of game. Uh, you can, and with this game, there's the multiplayer added in so you can uh, play through a couple courses with some friends. If you have friends that are into these type of games and it's just a really good exclusive for the console that I just don't think is talked about as much as it should be. Alright next up is the game that probably uh, shocked me the most on how much I enjoyed playing through it. Uh, I wasn't really expecting to get into this one too much because I'm I'm not a huge beat em up fan but I'm, I'm sort of starting to get into the genre a lot more. Uh, but this one I picked up, Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise. I would definitely 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 say this is a hidden gem. I barely see this game talked about, I barely see this game as stores, it's always about uh, the other game, Yakuza, which is made, I'm pretty sure, by the same company. Um, I've never played the Yakuza games, but I have played Fist of the North Star. Uh, this game's really fun, action's really fast paced, really over the top. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is based off of a manga, if I'm not mistaken. I, I don't really know the origins, I just play the games. I, I don't really know, like, the, I don't read the books or anything like that, I just play video games. Uh, so, I don't really know a lot of the backstory besides what's told in the game. And in the game, it's very easy to keep up with the story. Uh, it's pretty interesting. There's a lot of really funny characters, 
a really good side quest and there's some really really fun mini games that really change the pace of the game so like if you want to go like try really hard to beat up some hard boss and you just want to go like shake up some cocktails uh, at the bar mini games to earn some uh, rep and store discounts you can do that it's it's just really good on changing the pace of the game and always keeping you interested uh, you basically play as Kiryu I'm pretty sure uh, and he is a master of Hotoshiken. I'm sorry if I'm butchering these. Um, but it's basically a martial arts or fighting style. And there's a bunch of different fighting styles throughout the game. And through it, you're leveling up with a bunch of very unique uh, customization items that can increase your health, the amount of damage you do, increase the length of your combos, uh, increase the time in your uh, superpower duration, increase the damage you do in that time, increase damage reduction. There's so many different combinations you can do, which really makes it uh, unique to play through. And I really enjoy, uh, there's like a card mechanic and like it's almost like a little, little silver tags you can get when you beat certain bosses or you get a certain amount of um, items collected throughout the world, you can create these tags which will give you like almost one up like powers for a bit. Uh, also I touched on it before but the boss fights in this game are awesome. They're really challenging, they have different like um, tiers to them and elements to each boss fight and each boss fight has like unique patterns or unique fighting styles. Uh, that you gotta kind of learn to play against all the time, and this game is really a challenge if you don't sit there and grind and over level yourself. Uh, I really enjoyed playing this game and had fun actually having a fair challenge. It, it doesn't seem cheap in a way, and it's just really fun to play through and really satisfying when you get into the high combos and just beating the crap out of everybody. Uh, so I would highly recommend this game if you're into beat em ups at all or just want a fun game to pick up and play. Alright, next up is Murder Soul Suspect. Uh, this is one that was in the earlier life cycle of the PS4. Um, I think it was like year 2 or 3 that it was out this one came out. And this is another one that falls under the Sherlock Holmes style of gameplay, where it's more about storytelling and solving puzzles and solving mysteries, and less on the gameplay. There are some gaming mechanics, such as stealth, uh, some puzzle mechanics. Where this game really gets the hidden gem aspect to it, is one, I don't see it talked about enough, and two, the story in this game is awesome. Uh, so basically you play as Ronan O'Connor, uh, he's a detective that goes to this uh, murder scene to apprehend one of the notorious serial killers, the Bell Killer, uh, which is in the area. He runs into the Bell Killer, gets killed by him, and you turn into a ghost, so basically you're stuck in purgatory, and you have to find your way to solve one, how to figure out who the bell killer is, and two, how to get out of purgatory. So it's all about figuring that out, uh, learning about the ghost realm with uh, O'Connor. They don't just tell you a bunch of gameplay mechanics while your character uh, doesn't really know what's going on initially. You're learning with the character as it goes, which really makes uh, for a unique experience. And also there's a lot of uh, different ghosts that are stuck in purgatory that you uh, interact with and there's different uh, side missions and side stories and side investigations that you gotta do which really uh, change the pace and make it really interesting to learn about all these different side characters. And also doesn't help that if you're into Platinums, this is a very easy Platinum. Uh, I'm just saying that, like I, I got the Platinum for this game. I'm not really a super Platinum heavy guy. All right, then finally we got Vampire. Uh, so Vampire is a third person beat em up style of game almost has like a cross between a Dark Souls and Witcher 3 combat style because uh, you kind of got the power mechanics uh, like the signs from Witcher 3 but the combat and movements more so Dark Souls-y but uh, you don't have as much worry to do with the stamina so it's it, I would say it's more like a Witcher combat style um, but this game is very interesting and very unique I find I don't see too much about this game out there and what is out there, it's very mixed. Uh, some people really like the game, some people really don't. Uh, me personally, I really enjoyed playing this game. Uh, one of the big issues people have with this game is that it gives the assumption of choice, but really it's kind of linear in the choices. Um, that's true. Uh, the choices don't really have too much an effect, it just depends on who survives, who doesn't, and it kind of has an infamous obvious good choice, obvious bad choice system uh, with some 
pretty cool like twists in there. If you um, do all the correct answers, you can have certain people age you that wouldn't age you in the other thing, or certain people would survive that wouldn't survive, and then they would come back later in the story. So there is some branching paths, it's just not as open as uh, they wanted you to think in this game. Uh, so basically you play as Dr. Jonathan Reed, he's a doctor in the period of 1918 in uh, London. Uh, so basically he gets turned into a vampire very early on in the story, like right when you start the game. And then it's all about him learning to cope with his new powers and the issues that come with being a vampire in a city that part is trying to hunt down the vampires and part is run by the vampires. So there's a like clashing factions throughout this whole game. Uh, the main thing that drew me to this game was the story, uh, the atmosphere they create, the world they create, and the, the kind of dark gloominess with the, the rivaling factions, all the different um, like choices you make really gives it a dark gritty feel which I really like and the world in this game is really cool to learn about so if you're looking for a really good story game with some good third person action I would highly recommend this game all right now we're getting to the underrated games so these might be games that are popular and that I find get a bad rep uh, so you might hate these games or you might just hate them because you haven't played them and everybody says they're trash but I'm telling you that in my opinion I would at least give them a chance because I think they have some really good elements to them. Uh, so the first one is Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. I know everybody's like sitting here saying, oh he's a COD kid, oh Call of Duty sucks, it's just a casual game, blah blah blah, everybody's just for a multiplayer. But if I was to recommend one besides 4 in Modern Warfare 2, for the story and zombies, uh, just for single player, it would be this game. Uh, first off, I'll quickly touch on the zombies. Uh, the zombies in this game is set in kind of the 1980s in like a theme park. Uh, it's very interesting, uh, really sets a different tone compared to all the other zombie games. And I think it's the most interactive and fun just to mess around in occasionally. I still go back and play a couple games every now and then. Um, so if I was to recommend a zombie just for single player alone, I'd recommend this one. Uh, and also the main thing I'm selling about this game and really pushing for people to try as a story in this game. Uh, I think it's one of the better done Call of Duty stories uh, out of the franchise, and I've played all of them besides the new one that just came out. The reason why I say this one's probably one of the better story games uh, in the Call of Duty franchise is one, the combat's still there, it's still the solid same uh, really smooth feeling combat from a Call of Duty game, uh, but they brought it into space, which really adds a new element to it. A lot of people hated this game because they were still going with the modern era and like continue to go more modern and modern when everybody was asking to either reboot the World War franchise or at least go back to uh, World War II or at least current day era uh, games because everybody prefers those games usually with the Call of Duty franchise. Uh, but this game, I thought the campaign was really interesting. Uh, they had a pretty good story in this game and the main thing that I enjoyed about this game is you kind of were given like a hub ship, almost like in Mass Effect where you could go around picking what missions you would want to do, like interact with the crew, the cap in type thing. It's not as interactive as a Mass Effect game, I'm not saying it's like that, uh, but it kind of gives you the feel of more of a choice with your missions. You can do um, different side missions in different orders. You can pick what side missions to do, which will give you upgrades that will help you through the main story, uh, unlocking certain upgrades for your ships. Um, the ship battles are really interesting. Uh, they're at a larger scale than most games. They kind of resemble um, the Battlefront ship games from their campaign. And overall I just thought this was a solid first person shooter title, uh, even just for the single player alone. And you can get this game for like $5 now. So for $5 it's it's like 6 hour game and it's a, it's a pretty good playthrough, at least for a one playthrough. Uh, if I would only recommend this game if you're into shooters. Like if you want a shooter with some fun mechanics and a pretty decent story to play through, I'd recommend this game. Alright, next up is NBA 2K Playgrounds 2. Uh, this is a game that might be considered a hidden gem, might be considered a underrated game, but I put it in the underrated game just because it's 2K uh, NBA game, because it's currently the only game that dominates the market. Uh, but this is their sub game. Uh, so this is basically an NBA Jam style game, very arcadey, 
uh, you get like the super dunks, you can shoot from like anywhere from three with the same chance. Uh, there's all these different legends in the game and it's just uh, really fast paced cartoony, there's power ups and stuff like that. So it really gets the old generation vibe uh, for the NBA style of games really well. The reason I would put this underrated is a lot of people assume it's tied to the really rehashed Michael Jan Jackson heavy, greedy current 2K game and just the regular 2K basketball games, which I feel this is completely different in terms of the feel that I get from the game with uh, the gameplay, the Michael Jan's actions, um, and how the game was made. Uh, while this game does have like the my team card mechanic in terms of getting new players, you level up super fast and every time you level up, you gain coins that can easily get you the best players in the game like right off the bat. You open up a gold pack, you're guaranteed one of the best players and you're guaranteed four players. Uh, so there's a chance of getting four really good players just right off the hop. And you get those every time you level up. So really you gain a ton of players just by playing the game and progressing through the game. Um, like I've played probably 10 to 15 hours of this game and I'm probably three quarters of the roster done. Uh, the main reason why I'd recommend this game is the gameplay. The gameplay really reminds me of not as good as an NBA Jam game, but kind of up there. It's smoother in the fact that it's with a current day console, the frame rates are better, uh, the dribbling mechanics and the shooting mechanics feel a lot better because uh, they add the shot meter to kind of indicate like there's more, there's more relying on your skill to do well in this game than in an NBA Jam game in terms of the release rate and uh, making sure you don't mess up your timings during the dunks, timing when you use your power-ups, when you don't get your power-ups. One of the major selling points for me in this game is that you can go online with this game. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to go on uh, with my friend and we play through co-op campaigns of the season modes in this game. And overall this game is just fun and I find it's really not a greedy style of game and it's just fun to play with friends if you're into these style of games. Uh, next up is Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now this is one that got a horrible rep and well deserved horrible rep off the start uh, due to the heavy microtransactions and the game basically being unfinished. Uh, but they, to give them credit, they put a lot of work into this game after the fact and the devs team currently still is working on it and releasing new content for it. Uh, so they basically made this game completely free to play and in terms of once you get the game, campaign's still crap. Uh, it's The AI is terrible in it. They either insta-kill insta you or they walk around looking at walls. So I definitely wouldn't recommend for the campaign besides the one where you get to play as a Jedi and just go around messing people up. That's, that's still fun to do. Uh, but the multiplayer in this game is actually really, really, really good now. They made it a lot of fun. All the gameplay mechanics that were initially locked behind play walls have now been opened up through just playing the game and you unlock them as you play. And it really makes this game a lot of fun. It really, like it really hurts that the potential that this game had to actually carry on the Battlefront name pretty well um, off the start. And that just got squandered because of the greed of the company is crappy. But the fact that they have kind of toned it all back and continue to work and release new content for this game uh, really is a positive in my eyes because one the game is a lot better it's really fun to play online while i'd recommend still the old battlefront games over these current games i would definitely recommend picking up battlefront 2 if you're into the online at all if you're into first person shooter online games if you're into battlefield games or even if you're into the uh, battlefront 2 online on the pc uh, this game is still really good and holds a candle uh, with the original for online only. It's definitely not as well polished and fun to play as the originals, uh, but this game is still a lot of fun and I would recommend it, uh, especially for how cheap you can get it nowadays and with how well the uh, developers are currently updating it and just making the game better and better. I would definitely recommend getting into this game uh, if you have any inclination. Alright, so there you have it. That is my PS4. Uh, underrated games slash hidden gem video. If there's some that I didn't touch on because I haven't played them um, that you would like to see in the video, just comment them in the comments uh, so people can 
get more suggestions on which games are worth playing, which games are kind of hidden gems, which games are underrated games. Uh, and the reason I really wanted to do this video is because with the PS5 coming out soon, or next year, um, I really would like to show off a bunch of games that I think deserve praise uh, on the PS4 that I find don't really get the praise that they deserve. So that's really why I did this video. Uh, I hope you all enjoy, and just remember everybody has some nerdiness at their core.